So, <laughs> so, uh, been a while. Yeah, not intentional. So, this pandemic has been a little hard to make videos about going to the movie theater because there hasn't been a lot. Yeah. But the upside is some of them have been released on streaming and they actually would work out. Yeah, like we just, like we have Disney Plus now so we can watch streaming stuff. So, Soul. I'm just kidding. So, Soul. So, Pete Doctor what, is basically one of the bigger guy, one of the first guys to work at Pixar, and he's one of the bigger talents they've had. He's been, uh, he obviously put out Monsters, Inc., and Inside Out, and Up, and he's now the CCO of the entire company. But um, we were kind of waiting on bated breath for the idea of when his next movie was coming out. Uh, especially after Inside Out, which was probably one of the best movies of 2015. So, when they announced that he was working on his next one, Soul, that kind of led to a lot of buzz around it. Then, and, and the fact that it was going to be coming out as a big summer release after Onward, which you guys sucked on. You know, if a few of you guys had actually gone to see Onward in theaters, you wouldn't be complaining that the last movie you saw in theaters was Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah. But anyway... After the pandemic led led to on to most of the product most of movie slates getting shelved, we were just kind of wondering. Soul was kind of up in the air. It was always it was for a long time rumored to be put on Disney Plus, and after Mulan, it did not fantastic with the premium thing. It was just kind of like okay, so Soul is definitely getting a theatrical release until a few months ago when they announced that Soul was gonna. Get a streaming release for free on oh, Disney Plus for for Christmas, and it came out yesterday. Obviously, we didn't see it yesterday, but it's a little disappointing that this is coming out on on the, in theater on streaming instead of theaters because it's a it's a Pixar movie, and Pixar movies, despite the fact that they have that the market has kind of been saturated, are still an event. For us, anyway. They're kind of made for the theater, so the fact that this is going to be the first movie to, of theirs specifically made for the theaters not to be put in theaters is a bit disappointing, especially when it comes to the fact, especially with how stacked the cast is. We have Jamie Foxx, Tina Fey, Angela Bassett, and basically we don't know a lot about the plot to this movie because we've been keeping spoiler free, but we know that it's a lot like Coco, except it's a lot like Coco, but it's not exactly like Coco. Obviously, because they're not going to make the same movie twice, only this time with different kinds of people. But it's very... Coco... Fo the thing is, Coco focused more on death as a subject. Soul focuses more on the beginning of life and everything like that. So it kind of focuses on where life starts. Yeah. Rather than just where it ends. So, yeah, we've got nothing else to say right now, I don't think. Oh, Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross are doing the music. The are doing this original score, the original along songs are doing... Along with John Batiste, who is doing... They they did got three people doing the music for this, so this will be very interesting. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, other than that, Pete Doctor is... As long as Pete Doctor's directing it, it's probably going to be a big crier, because it's a Pixar movie directed by the guy who did Up and Monsters, Inc., and all those movies. And with a script from, a, from the director of... Uh, from the writer... And a script from the writer of... Uh, I don't remember what he did. He just put out a new movie with movie. I don't remember the name of it. I'm gonna to have to look it up later and bring it up when we come back later. But yeah, this is probably gonna work. I mean, it's definitely gonna work. It's a like I said, Pixar movie, Pete Doctor. I think this is gonna be all right. So yeah, we're just gonna go into the room and watch this thing now. Okay, see you later. After the jump. Okay, so that's that, and uh, yeah, it's a Pixar movie. So basically, it's fantastic. Yeah. So the thing, the thing about this movie is that let's get into it. Uh, the thing about this movie is that it's actually really, really smart about the way that it does things. It's not. It is intelligent. It does so much with what it has, with the concept. It just. 
it's such a smart movie. Like, I don't know what about it. It just doesn't feel like any other kind of movie out there, and that's the best part about Pixar. And it was kind of on purpose, because Pete Docter made sure when he was making the movie that him and his team just basically worked with all these theological and <laughs> logical and psychological and <laughs> logical and basically every kind of metaphysical way of thinking about the world beyond us and the world that and where personalities and everything come from that we just that the, they just kind of nailed it in every conceivable way the jokes work because they kind of go deeper into that stuff and it's also but it's not the funniest movie, Pete Doctor. But in the terms of Pete Doctor movies and in terms of Pixar movies, it's not the funniest, and it's not the biggest tearjerker. But it's definitely one of Pixar's deeper films. And I think the reason it's so good is just because these characters are so deep into it, and you can feel certain points of it. Like, and like the first time we actually really hear the character of Joe Gardner play piano, you feel it, how passionate he is about it. Which is a testament to John Fest. He, he's playing and the animation and everything like that just, that just shows the passion of this character. And then we have Trent Reznor and Atticus Schaefer's amazing ethereal score for when we're in the great beyond and the great before. It just can't... You, when, they sw when we switch from regular New York to... York to the Great Beyond, they transit, they perfectly transition it into more of a synth heavy score just to accentuate how new age technical it can be in the Great Beyond, in this different world. Yeah. And then we have Tina Fey and Jamie Foxx just playing perfectly off of each other, and they're just so funny and have great chemistry. And the thing is, and we can't go too deep into what makes the relationship between Joe and 22 so incredible, but it's just, but God, when it gets there, it gets there. And and then funny points like Richard Iowate and Graham Norton written, and uh, Rachel House and so many other great comedic voices showing up in this movie just if only just for quick little bit parts rachel house is as the as terry the kind of sort of villain of the piece more of an obstacle really of just a small obstacle really is just fantastic she has so much funny stuff happening and we got and then we have some bit parts filled in by Questlove and david diggs and then like we mentioned earlier angela bassett and that's where this is this movie is just this movie just incredibly cast it's well it, the voices are great across the board or i and we got an amazing script by Kemp by Kemp Powers and Mike Jones with Pete Doctor. Kemp Powers being also serving as co-director, having done the done One Night in Miami. Was it? I think it is. Yeah, One Night in Miami, another movie that is based on a play he wrote that just came out on Amazon Prime. I think. Yeah, yeah, it came out on Amazon Prime, but yeah, there's a, it. It, when a movie works, it works. There's not much to say. There's not much you can. We can rave about how there, we can't really think of much to say, mostly because we're kind of on a little out of practice. But animation wise, it's fantastic because it, everything looks amazing. Pixar has stepped its game up, and I'm very interested to see where they're going with their next couple projects, especially since the projects they announced seem very Ghibli esque when it comes to terms of story. Like, I'm very interested to see what Turning Red is going to end up being. Um, okay, maybe we should talk about the short, because yes. in order to recreate the theater experience as best we could, we went and we watched the short Burrow beforehand. And I'm going to say, it's adorable. It is very cute. I did that. I thought it was going to be a little more emotional, but mostly because a lot of Pixar shorts lately have been very emotion-driven, like without or float or all of those they've had a lot of more emotional stuff with their shorts but this time around it was very it was just kind of a nice cute little cartoon about a bunny yeah it's a it's a it's a it's a short about a bunny who is, likes things in a very particular way and then learns how to accept 
other people's input. It's very, it, it's very cute. But yeah, it's Pixar. It's gonna be blown. It's blowing everything out of the water as usual. Animation is like next level. It's gonna be interesting to see where it goes from here, where Pixar goes from here, especially since they're not going to be falling back into the sequel trap at, like they have been the last couple of years. At least not for a little while. But, yeah, uh, yeah that, like we have keep saying, every time a movie does exactly what it wanted to do, it, you just do it. So, that's it. We'll be, hopefully we'll be back soon. We're hopefully going to be going to a movie theater in the next couple of months. Yeah. So, uh, bye. Bye.